Okay, back to isometries, transformations that preserve congruence. This video will be about rotations. Okay, now we're going to rotate triangle DEF counterclockwise around the point zero, zero. When we do a rotation, we imagine that every point is like connected by a rigid axle to the center, which is zero, zero, and we rotate around that center. What we find is that the rule for a 90 degree counterclockwise, the opposite direction as the clock goes to the left, that rule takes every point x, y, and its image is negative y, x. So we're switching what was in the x and y values, we're switching them. y goes into the x value, the old y, and x, the original x, goes into the new y value. But in addition, we multiply this new x value by negative 1. In doing that, <clears throat> in doing that, the point 4, 7, d, goes to d prime, which is going to be negative 7, 4. Whoops, d is not p. d prime, I switch them, 7, 4, and then I multiply the x by negative 1. That becomes d prime. e prime, well, switching them doesn't do much, but I still have to multiply the new x value by negative 1. So I get negative 2, 2. That's e prime. And f prime becomes 5, 2. We switch the x and the y, and then we multiply with the x by negative 1. So we've got negative 5, 2, and that's f prime. Now, you can ask yourself, how do I know that this is even a rotation? Well, we can take our compass, and we can look at what we would get if we consider how far is D from this, the center. Notice that I'm putting the center of the compass at 0, 0, which is our center of rotation, and I'm putting the radius of the compass at D, because I want to demonstrate that that radius stays the same as I get to d prime. If I then connect d prime and d to their center, you know, as if there was this invisible wheel that rotated, I can measure this angle and I can see that that angle is 90 degrees. You can do that exercise with every one of the points on the triangle DEF that rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise to the triangle D prime, E prime, F prime. Okay. We have a rule that took us 90 degrees counterclockwise. Suppose we wanted to go 180 degrees counterclockwise. Well, we could start by doing 90 degrees. That gave us negative 7, 4 for d prime. There I go with that p again. But now I want to go 180 degrees counterclockwise, so I should do 90 again. Switch them to get to d double prime for negative 7, and then again make the x coordinate negative. So notice that to go 180 degrees counterclockwise, you don't have to do it in two steps. You can just look at the original point and multiply both coordinates by negative 1. So that's our rule. Whatever you have in x and y, multiply them each by negative 1 for the image. So in this case, the image, I'm going to call it d double prime because of what we did here, but we're just doing one operation. So 
4, 7 is going to negative 4, negative 7. Somehow D's and P's are mixed up in my mind. And 2, 2 is going to go to negative 2, negative 2, which is going to be E double prime. And 2, 5 is going to go to negative 2, negative 5. F double prime. And I connect those points. And this is an 180 degree counterclockwise rotation. So we can see that E and E prime are on a line together right through the origin of the center. And F and F prime are also on a 180 degree angle aligned through the center. I'll draw that one so you can see it. The same thing holds true for D and D prime. It's very straightforward to see that this rule gives us a 180 degree counterclockwise rotation. The last rotation we're actually going to um, construct on the video is a 270 degree counterclockwise rotation. Remember all these numbers 180, 270, they're multiples of 90. So all you really have to remember is the 90 degrees. To go 90 degrees counterclockwise we switch and make the X negative. To go another 90 degrees we switch again and make the X negative. And to finally go to 270 degrees, degrees counterclockwise, we switch again and make the x negative. So we switch negative 7, negative 4, and when we multiply negative 7 by negative 1, we make it positive. So we can see that a 270 degree counterclockwise rotation, we switch y comma x, and we make the new y negative. That matches what we did to d here. So let's construct the points. I'm going to call this d prime. We, we didn't name anything yet, so this is going to be one 270 degree counterclockwise rotation. So d prime, we're going to switch 7, 4 instead of 4, 7, and we're going to make the y negative. I didn't leave enough room, so I'm going to just erase that. We switched 4, 7 and made the y negative. E prime. We're switching, but they're both 2, so that's pretty easy. And we make the y negative. We're not really making it negative. To be very accurate, we should say we're multiplying what turns out to be the y coordinate by negative 1. We're not forcing it to be negative. That's our result. When we go to F prime, we're switching them, and we're multiplying 2 by negative 1. And now I'll graph them. <clears throat> 7, negative 4, 4, 7, negative 4, gives us D prime. 2, negative 2, gives us E prime. And 5, negative 2, gives us F prime. I encourage you to do these rotations yourself and notice that if we rotated E all the way around to E prime, we would notice that this angle here, this clockwise angle is 90. That tells you that the counterclockwise angle was 270. One more point in rotations relates to that idea. If you look at this little chart, these are our rules that we developed for the counterclockwise rotations. Then we say, well, do we need new rules for clockwise? 
Well, think about this. A 270 degrees counterclockwise rotation, as we just saw, is like a 90 degree clockwise rotation. So we just take the rule from 270 degrees counterclockwise and put it in 90 degrees clockwise. These are the same rotation, really. You end up in the same place. 180 degrees is nice because whichever way you go, clockwise or counterclockwise, you end up in the same place, so these are the same. You should check this out. And finally, 270 degrees clockwise is like 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we pull this rule down here. It turned out that all we needed was this one rule. We did it twice to get here. We did it three times to go here. And then we used these to get the clockwise rules. So we built everything we know on the 190 degree counterclockwise rotation. This is the end of rotations.